This is a really good question that I feel like probably millions of people are asking themselves how to figure this out and how to succeed, uh, especially financially in this life. But again, I'm going to use the the idea that there's two minds. There's the worldly mind that the Bible refers to as the flesh. And then there's what Paul refers to as the Christ mind. We are programmed in this world to believe a lot of different things that are not true. Some things that we're programmed to believe are actually good and helpful, such as how to cook food, wash hands, you know, uh, treating other people in a beautiful way, such and such. Mathematics, science, history, all of that stuff, to, ex- to an extent, can be a really good um, way for us to adapt to this environment. But there's a lot of stuff that we are programmed to believe. We're fat. We're skinny, we're ugly, we're cute, uh, we're rich, we're poor. All of these things are false. All of these, all of these things are just attributes that are put into the mind, uh, and, and none of it's true. And I know that may sound wild at first, but none of those attributes that you uh, identify with are true. So if we look at it like two different minds— In the worldly mind, if we say, I want to have a lot of money and I'm very ambitious, I want to be a CEO of a company, I want to have power, I want to be able to make a difference in the world with this or this or this, how can I achieve that without the worldly mind? Well, I think it would be safe to say that Jesus Christ was not ambitious. He was not ambitious at all. Uh, nor was Ramana Maharshi ambitious. Uh, someone once called Gandhi ambi- ambitious, and he was quick to correct them that he was not ambitious. So how did Jesus Christ, Ramana Maharshi, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, um, how did these people find success? Well, when we dissolve or surrender the worldly mind into the Christ mind, then we begin to take on what is meant for us in this life, our true purpose. And our true purpose might be different than what we have been imagining or what we have been planning on. In fact, sometimes it's drastically different. So, if somebody wants to be ambitious and become a CEO of a big company, then my suggestion would be stay in the worldly mind. Stay there. Stay in the flesh. And do whatever it takes until you get to the point that you become CEO and realize That's not it. And realize that having all this power, having all this control, having all this money is not it. Now, there's a flip side to it. Because am I saying that every person that's a CEO right now is a worldly, uh, fleshy person? Not necessarily. Because there's a flip side to it that when we surrender and we are living our true purpose in God, for some people, they'll be a janitor of a high school and they'll be living their true purpose. Somebody else might become a CEO of some big company or corporation or um, or something like that. For us to analyze and look into why this person only got to be a janitor while this person got to be a CEO is still looking at things with the worldly mind. We've been programmed to look at 
good, better, best. We've been programmed to see good, bad. We've been programmed to see 30,000 a year, uh, 400,000 a year. We've been programmed to see a uh, uh, lowly job, high job. But in the absolute reality, in the Christ mind, both of those jobs are equal. You, I, I, I have known a janitor of a school that was probably happier than anybody else in this town. Happy and free, and uh, the money that they made as a janitor was more than enough money that they could ever use or spend. It's all about a perspective. And there's also a lot of CEOs that are living in hell. They hate themselves and they hate their body. They hate their job. They hate what they're doing to the world. But they're stuck, or at least they think they're stuck. Uh, the same can go for, you know, famous people, actors, actresses, uh, anybody that's famous, or we think, oh, look at them, they got it made. We say, oh, look at J-Lo. She's a million years old, but still looks gorgeous, and you, you have no idea whether these people are happy or not. And usually the truth be told, when we read their biography or we watch their um, interviews, oh, wow, I'm surprised. They weren't happy at all. Um, they were suffering from all the same thing that lowly people suffer from. I'm telling you, folks, that's not it. Fame is not it. Money is not it. What is it is complete surrender to God, to the universe, and resume the Christ mind that is your birthright. To be in that spaciousness, to be free, and you flow. Some people flow to a factory and they work for 30 years and they retire. And it's, it's, it was the purpose of their life. Some people flow, like Gandhi, for example. He flowed into this and into this and into this. And God was bringing Gandhi a, a pretty, big, um, pretty big task. But he probably never felt like it was a task at all. Mother Teresa, how many orphans did she love, feed, heal? Thousands and thousands. I seriously doubt she woke up one day and say, I have a goal to feed 30,000 orphans. Not 30,001, not 29,999, but 30,000. There was no ambition there. There was just this love. And when love drives you in this life, true divine love, this Christ love, when it drives you, it'll drive you to places, the very movement itself, you will consider your life to be a walking miracle. Or we can be fixated on something. And you know, maybe one of the unique things about me and what I teach is this. If you want to stay in the world, by all means, stay in the world. If you want to have a worldly mind, then by all means, have a worldly mind. I'm not evangelizing you to tell you you're going to go to hell and you're going to do this and that if you don't, because that's not my job. Maybe that's somebody else's job, but it's not mine. But I will tell you this, if you want to find true happiness, happiness is not money. Of course we have bills to pay. Of course we work and do, and, and, and do our, our, our duties. Of course we do. But what some people struggle with is not, do I pay my bills or not? What some people struggle with is, do I make enough money to buy a Toyota Corolla or a Lamborghini? And that's a whole different, it's a whole different uh, way of thinking. I'm not going to say it's wrong or bad, but if you want to be a CEO, then you have, you have really only one choice. I could say two choices. Do everything you can to make it to CEO, even if it means lying, cheating, stealing, hurting people, anything you can possibly do to become CEO. And then the day you put that name tag on and look in the mirror, 
you're not going to like what you see. And you're going to be tortured by all the stuff that you have done to get to that level because that's not the way we do it. Or you can surrender to God, to the universe, and God may carry you into some ministry or God may may carry you into uh, becoming CEO of Google. But if he does, you'll be able to wake up every morning, look in the mirror and say, it's all you, God. It's none. It's not me. If you tell me to get up every day and go into the Google headquarters and make the best of everything and love people, then I will do it. And the moment, God, you tell me to resign and go feed the starving children in, in, in some third world country, then I'm going to do it. And nobody on this planet has ever been happy, truly happy, without true surrender. That's just, to me, that's a fact. It's probably an arguable fact, I know, but to me, it's a fact. So, how do people become CEOs? Some people are just naturally guided into that position. Other people, they lie, cheat, and steal their way to that position. Don't be either one. Just be the one who surrenders and accept what God gives you as if what God is giving you. If God is giving you um, the job of being a custodian at a school, then that is your CEO job. And if you treat that job as you would being the CEO of Google... A lot more opportunities open for you. It is to surrender to the moment. It is surrender to the Christ mind. Because God does not exist in the past. God does not exist in the future. God exists now. And when we surrender to that, all opens up. Forget about money. Try it. Because most people are already trying the worldly mind approach and they're getting nowhere they're saying what's the secret there is no secret somebody wakes up into a royal family and they call him a prince you say why is that fair let's let's talk about fairness in another video let's talk about equality equity in another video because the oak tree and the, and the dogwood tree, the dogwood can say, it's not fair you get to be so tall. And the oak tree could say, it's not fair you have such beautiful flowers. All of that is the world mind. All of that is the flesh. Even the Buddha knew that the root of all suffering was those desires. Because whether you want to be CEO or not, the desires, all these mental desires, will just lead to suffering. Even the Buddha knew that. But the Christ mind takes it even further than that. Because not only are you left empty without desire, you are giving your you are given your true purpose in this life. And I and and that true purpose will be the most beautiful, joyous thing. That you've ever found in your life. That's what's missing. Not, not the title of CEO. Not, not some fancy um, title or some big paycheck. That's not what's missing in anyone's life. I, I promise you that. What's missing in people's life is true joy, true contentment, true acceptance, true love. And all of this comes, it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a commercial where they're trying to sell you uh some gadget, and they say, but wait, there's more. If you order now, we'll give you a second set. But wait, there's more. If you order now, we give you this hat. But wait, there's more. And when you surrender to the Christ mind, it's an endless amount of, but wait, there's more. It's an endless amount of, but wait, there's more.
Because there's not a day that goes by that I'm not surprised at how miraculous all this is unfolding. Because I used to be an ambitious person. I wanted to be this and that and have a lot of money for the wrong reasons, honestly. I wanted, I wanted lots of money for the wrong reasons. Not, I want a lot of money so I can help people. No, I wanted a lot of money so I could keep doing all of the stuff that I desired. And the moment I dropped all of that desire, it was quiet. And sometimes quiet is scary. Whoa, wait a minute. What's going on? God, are you still there? I don't hear nothing now. Just chill out. This is why we study the Word of God. This is why we practice our prayer, our meditation, our worship. This is why you practice. Because that practice becomes the bridge from one moment to the next, to the next, to the next. As this love comes flooding into your heart and soul. But I know a lot of people who have that mindset, this worldly mindset. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be this. I want to be that. It would be better. Billy Graham, on something I just watched yesterday, said it perfectly. And he was um, reading out of the Bible. I don't remember what verse or anything. But basically he said this. If you can learn to control your mind, that'll be a greater victory in your life than it would be to take this city. And I completely agree. I would change the wording a little bit. Not because Billy Graham was uh, not perfect as he was. But I would say this. Surrender your worldly mind and accept the Christ mind that's already within you. It's already within you. It doesn't come shooting out of heaven like a shooting star. And then bam, I received it. It's like living in darkness. But the, this darkness was but a veil covering you up. The light's already there. You just don't recognize it. You just don't see it. And when you uncover that veil and suddenly you say, I, I feel it. Hallelujah. Rejoice. This light, this love pouring out of my heart, pouring out of my heart. You hear what I'm saying? It's not all this coming to me. It's coming from you. It's pouring out of my heart because it was always there. So either make the decision. I'm sticking with my worldly mind and I'm going to find every single way possible because my only goal is to become a CEO or some big head, big shot of a company. Then I would say go for it. Or surrender. There's a really good book talking about all this. The Surrender Experiment. Uh, if anybody, by, by Michael Singer. If anybody's ever had a chance to read this. Um, it's a really good book. Um, because all he wanted to do is meditate. And he ended up being the CEO of a billion dollar company. He never asked for it. He never really wanted it. But he continued to surrender. You can too. Namaste. Namaste.